Hey Sojourners, Holland Min the Wandering Parson here. Wanted to take a little bit of time today. I know that I haven't had any videos out in some time, been extremely busy. Apologize for that. Today I want to do a video on waterproofing your canvas bags, satchels, or haversacks. So stick with me and we'll get right to it. Hey guys, as you know, there are a number of videos out there that talk a great deal about waterproofing canvas. Uh, there's everything from simple and natural to synthetic and difficult. And I'll touch, I'll try to touch on all of those and let you know what I think is best for your haversack, satchel, or possible bag. Uh, I have a number of items that I'll show you and we'll go through them one by one. The first product I want to talk about is your over-the-counter retail heavy-duty silicone waterproofer. Uh, this particular brand is made by Soft Soul, but there are a number of different manufacturers out there. You have Kiwi, you have uh, uh, Water Seal, a number of different ones. Uh, this stuff works really well for a short time. Uh, the pros and cons. The pros is that it's quick, it's easy, you can buy it off the shelf for about $6 a can. Uh, you can spray it on and it tends to do a decent job if it is just high humidity or occasional, uh, occasional downpours of, or light rain. The problem with this product is that it, it only works for a short time. What I mean by that, and in my experience, uh, utilizing um, any number of different types, I've come to find out that uh, once you've sprayed your bag down, and that's another thing, you need to really let it sit 24 to 48 hours for it to sit or dry appropriately. But being out in the weather for any amount of time in the rain, uh, this tends not to work as well. It works great initially for light rain or mist, fog, humidity, anything that's going to um, cause your equipment to get damp. It works well. The problem is, is if it gets any more than that, this will only hold up for so long and then eventually will uh, your bag will leak. Uh, this requires a number of uh, uh, different applying. You have to apply this more than a couple of times and um, unfortunately if you want to go out into bad weather you're going to need to take a can of this with you and try to find some place to let your equipment dry so it can dry as well. Um, so that's the um, silicone waterproofer that you can buy by different manufacturers. Our next one we're going to talk about guys is boiled linseed oil. For most of you you know uh, boiled linseed oil has been used for hundreds of years to seal canvas. Uh, it works extremely well, but there are some pros and cons to using it. The pros, it can be purchased just about anywhere. You can buy it at Walmart, you can buy it at Kmart, you can buy it at Ace, you can buy it at Lowe's, you can buy it at Home Depot. Uh, this can right here is one quart and it's about seven dollars. Uh, boiled linseed oil works very well. The cons, takes a really long time to dry. Boiled linseed oil because it isn't oil, if you don't mix it with some kind of uh, other element like turpentine, it tends to take a while to dry. Uh, in the past, when I have used it, I've mixed one-to-one -one ratio with turpentine and boiled linseed oil, treated my fabrics, and then allowed them to dry for up to a week. Uh, it also gives it a chance to let the boiled linseed oil smell, as well as the turpentine smell, to dissipate. Uh, it works extremely well. Uh, but those are the pros and cons. Uh, the turpentine runs about the same price, about $7. So you can probably get a good amount of, of canvas uh, sealing for about $15. Um, what I usually do is depending on the size of the product that I am going to seal, I'll take a five gallon jug, I'll go one to one, uh, generally, it's probably half this, so uh, two pints uh, for each. Put it in the five-gallon drug jug, and then soak my canvas in it. Um, and then what I'll do is run a string in the yard and hang it up. 
Uh, you don't want to have this anywhere near concrete. You don't want to have it anywhere near uh, you anything that you don't want stained because boiled linseed oil will stain. So just make sure that if you use it, it's someplace that doesn't stain. Now there are a couple of other products that you can use to seal canvas. One is tar. Tar was used widely during the Civil War to seal canvas, to, deal, to seal um, possible bags, those kinds of things. It would absolutely work well, but I think you can see the pros and cons in using tar. Uh, tar takes a really long time to dry and it's not as flexible. The problem with that is you tend to get cracks once it dries. So it doesn't work quite as well as uh, some of the other things that we've already talked about. Also, you can use rubber. You can buy a rubber sealant, rubber sealant uh, by the gallon can. That works well. The issue with rubber sealant is the fact that it's expensive. It's not cheap. Um, but oftentimes you can get rubber in whatever color you want. So you can use it, though it does get expensive and it would probably be cost prohibitive uh, for you to use on a possible bag satchel or, uh, or haversack. And then you also have latex. You can use latex. The issue with latex is obvious. Some people have latex allergies, uh, so that may not be something that you'll want to use. Um, I've seen people use latex house paint, exterior house paint, on their bags, and it will work. Again, you're dealing with an issue of smell, you're dealing with an issue of drying, and you're also dealing with an issue, depending on the latex paint you use, cracking or uh, not sealing quite well. Those are all things that you, you absolutely can use, though I probably wouldn't recommend them. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the things that I would recommend and think that you should use if you were going to seal your canvas bags uh, or waterproof them. Okay guys, looks like a bar of soap, but it, what it actually is, beeswax and paraffin wax. Uh, beeswax and paraffin wax, you can use either or, or you can use both combined. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the paraffin wax tends to be a little more um, stiff, has a little more density to it, uh, so when you mix it with beeswax, which tends to be a lot more soft and a lot more moldable, it actually comes out with a pretty decent bar, and it allows you to actually, in time as you use it, it, it actually, I don't want to say melts because that's not the right word, but it softens as you're actually working it into the canvas. Sorry about the noise guys, we've got a lot of motorcycles in town here for uh, Thunder in the Valley so they keep driving by and driving by. It works very well and as you use it, it actually gets softer because of the heat and friction that you use in grinding it into your, or rubbing it into your canvas and it works extremely well. The only thing is sometimes people don't want to use paraffin because it's a petroleum product. That's okay. Uh, let me show you what I have moved to and I think probably works the best. Of course we have um, the, the beeswax. This is pure beeswax um, and uh, it of course works extremely well. <clears throat> it tends to be soft. Beeswax tends to be a lot more pliable when it melts. And that's why often I would mix the paraffin wax at, uh, to, to stiffen it up a little bit and turn it into bars so it worked really well when working it into the fabric. But there's another product that I'm using now and it works extremely well. And it's soy wax. Soy wax is all natural, of course, as you know, it comes from soybeans. It's, an, it's oil based, because, but it's oil based from soybeans works extremely well, works very similar to the paraffin wax, but it's not as dense. And because it's not as dense, the wax tends to be much softer, and it tends to work more evenly into the canvas. What I'm going to show you now is how I prepare the, uh, the soy wax and the beeswax and how I would actually treat one of my canvas bags from the Wandering Parson, so stay tuned. 
This is one of my uh, traditional 18th, 19th century haversacks that I sell in my Etsy store, uh, etsy.com slash the wandering parson. Uh, it's just a 10 ounce canvas bag, very simple. They run about $15. Um, they work great. Uh, the only thing is they're unwashed and they're untreated. Uh, that's why I can give them, uh, give them away so cheaply. Uh, what I have done is I've shown you this one, which is just, just manufactured. Um, it works obviously very well, but I've just finished them. You can see how flimsy it is. It hasn't been treated. Now understand that canvas will repel water to a point in any state. The problem is uh, when canvas gets wet because it's cotton, it tends to retain water. So over time, that water will get retained into the canvas because it's cotton and it obviously will saturate whatever you have inside. The goal is to waterproof or to add repellent to your canvas to ensure that whatever's wet on the outside doesn't get wet on the inside. This is a, a typical uh, haversack and this is one that I had treated with this is one that I've treated with the uh, wax paraffin mixture. Uh, as you can see, it's stiff, it, it holds its rigidity, works extremely well, and uh, you can see that it doesn't crunch up because it's impregnated with wax. Now at the end of the video, what I'm going to do is show you how well this repels water. But until then, I just wanted to show you what the um, haversack that hasn't been treated or washed looks like and what a washed and treated haversack looks like and then I'll go through the process of doing that for you so stay tuned hey guys as you can see I've got about six ounces of each the soy wax and the beeswax combined together when the water begins to boil I'll go ahead and put this in the double boiler once it melts to a liquid I'll use the paint brushes to apply it to apply it to the the canvas once that takes place then what I'll do is uh, I'll show you uh, with the other side how to apply it with the bar and you can see the differences between the two both are are very effective the heating and melting process tends to work a little better because it distributes uh, more evenly but the bar, uh, the, the rubbing of the bar works extremely well and uh, most of my canvas that I use I tend to do it that way because it works just fine. But I'll show you both and how to prepare both and how to finish both. So stay tuned. Here you go guys, you can see how that melting process is taking place in the double boiler. You just keep mixing it up, mixing it up. Now you want to mix this of course until it is completely li liquid. Once it's completely liquid then you can turn your your heat down. Now I have done this with an alcohol stove, I have done this with a propane stove, uh, I've even done this on a uh, fireside. So you can do this in any way. And you can do it without the double boiler. The only thing is you want to make sure that you watch your beeswax. The problem is beeswax can tend to uh, burn. Um, and of course that being said so can the soy wax. Soy wax can burn too. Uh, that's why I like to use the double boiler because it uh, melts evenly and it greatly reduces the ability of that wax to burn. Right now we're just mixing the wax. As you can see most of it has gotten to a liquid consistency. Uh, you also want to make sure that you use a fairly decent paintbrush with this. Uh, you don't want to use any sponge brush. Use a sponge brush and what will happen is that those sponges tend to either disintegrate, get sopped up and don't work very well, or they'll melt. Uh, so you want to make sure that you use a pretty decent um, crafting uh, paintbrush or some kind of brush. Natural hair brush works well. The only thing with natural hair brushes is they can uh, lose their bristles. Uh, and not that the Synthetic ones can't, it's just I find that that happens more often with, with the natural uh, paintbrushes. 
So let me go ahead and get this to a liquid form here. We're almost there. Looks like we are just about there. And you can see the nice yellow. It looks great. And what we'll do is uh, we have our haversack here. I'm going to get this set up and I'll bring you right back. We'll get you focused in on the haversack and we'll get started. All right, guys, went ahead and laid this out for you. As you can see, just a canvas haversack. It's been washed but not treated. And what you're going to do is you're just going to take your wax and apply it. Now, once you apply it, it's going to sink right in. It's not going to waste any time at all. Now, usually one bar that I make of, of wax will do an entire bag. So just be aware of that. Doesn't take a whole lot, though you do want to spend a little extra time around the seams. The seams are where the where the water tends to want to leak or at least pull. Uh, when, you're, when your seams pull that water, they can, of course, become uh, very saturated and then, of course, they're going to leak. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and show you with the front side of this haversack, how I do this by just applying it, just applying the, the wax. And it smells really nice, it smells like honey. Wonder why. Uh, I've always enjoyed the smell of beeswax. But see, it almost goes on like you're basting a turkey with butter. It's very simple to do. One mistake that I did make was not putting something down on my table here. I have to chip that stuff up. So that's it. You can see how evenly this is distributed across the front of this bag. And again, the seams, you want to make sure those seams are good and done. Once this starts to dry, you can take the haversack and pull it apart like right here and apply that wax into the groove. You can see. And just keep applying that into the groove and that is going to seal seal those stitches do the other side here. You can see how thick that wax is just getting on that bag. That's perfect. You want this to be smooth with smooth smooth. Alright. I'm going to let that dry and we'll be right back. Alright guys, I don't know if you can see this somewhat close up. You can see how dense, how dense that that wax is impregnated into that canvas. This right here would be as waterproof as you're going to get it. But we're not finished, but I wanted to show this to you. Now the next step is going to be uh, what I normally do, and what I normally do is rub the wax into the canvas itself. Let me show you how that's done. Here's that bar that I had, and I want to show it to you. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this bar and actually work it into the canvas like this. And as you do that, what happens is the bar will begin to heat up. And as it heats up, it'll lay wax into, into the, uh, the threads of the canvas itself. That's all you have to do. 
the issue, of course, obviously with this is it takes time to do it. Uh, and you're not going to be able to distribute as much wax into the actual fabric uh, at one time as you would utilizing the paintbrush. But it is just as effective, and you can do this. What you do is you just start rubbing and just make sure that you get the entire thing covered. You don't want to leave any part of the fabric not covered with the wax because that's just going to decrease the integrity of the waterproofing itself or the, the resistance of water being able to get into the fabric. Okay, So just be aware of that. Just You can see how that's starting to round over and it's getting soft. And as that happens, it heats up because of the friction and it begins to distribute the wax so much easier makes it very simple to do. Now I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is definitely an, a lot of wax impregnated into that cover. Not nearly as much as if you were to melt it, but the problem with obviously with melting is you're going to get a lot of wax into that canvas and it may be more than you want and maybe exactly what you want. This way it's so much easier to regulate the amount of wax that you want to get on your canvas. So if you just want to make it so it's repellent, you can do that. If you want to basically fill every single square of fabric um, with wax, you can do that as well. That's kind of what I prefer because the last thing I want is to be out in the bush and have an issue with my equipment getting wet because I didn't plan appropriately when I was preparing my canvas. Let me go ahead and finish this up guys and uh, I'll show you the finished product when I'm done. Turn you on in a minute. Alright guys, as you can see uh, this is absolutely impregnated. I did not do the strap yet. Uh, the strap you would just do the same way but uh, I've used the, the uh, bar of beeswax and um, soy wax. I rubbed it into the actual bag itself. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a heat gun and we're going to use a heat gun to make sure that that wax is melted into as far into the uh, as far into the canvas as we could possibly get it. And then what that's going to do is that's just going to set hopefully more evenly that uh, that wax. So let me get that set up and we'll get started with it. Alright guys, you can use any kind of um, a heat gun. I happen to use a, a Wagner heat gun. It's got a low and a high setting. You can even use a hair dryer for this. All you're really doing is heating up the heating up the um, the wax so it imp impregnates into the fabric itself. Uh, so let me show you what it does. Now also be aware as we do this it's going to change the color of the fabric. Alright, just be aware of that. Um, let me go ahead and get this going and you'll see how this works. I'll start up here in the corner. I'm going to run it on high to get it nice and warm. And I don't know if you can see that, but that wax is just melting into the fabric. Let me see if I can't uh, get you guys zoomed in a little bit here so you can see that a little better. There we go. I don't know if you can see it better, but the wax just melts into the fabric. And that's what you want. It's going to allow it to even out and help better be distributed. Okay guys, here's our bag. Absolutely saturated. 
and as you can see it's evened out from the last time you saw it uh, that heat gun really helps in eating that out I did take the brush a little bit to help even that out as well but as you can see here on the front it was done with with the bar uh, and the bar works very well you just once you let it dry and sink in you'll see spots that uh, have no wax on it all you have to do is go back and fill those in and that way uh, the entire front will be looking just like that. So if you don't have access to a double boiler, you don't have access to a single burner, uh, this is the most easiest way to do this. And I actually prefer this method, and the reason why I prefer this method is because you have more control over the amount of wax that you put on. And it'll give you the opportunity to make sure that each little spot on your bag is filled in. Um, so there it is. There's the bag. Um, works great. Again, beeswax and either paraffin or uh, soy wax works great. What I've actually decided to do is if somebody orders a bag from me from uh, etsy.com slash the wandering parson I'm going to make these bars available for about seven dollars a piece and uh, three dollars shipping so it'll be ten dollars total one of these bars will do an entire bag and in many cases will do probably more than one now if you order a bag and you order the uh, the bar uh, uh, the shipping will be free on the bar so I won't charge you for shipping on the bar just on the bag itself uh, so that's something to think about uh, I really really like using the beeswax and soy wax mixture. If that's something that you're interested, great. Um, but I think it's a wise idea to make sure that you treat your bag. Your bag will actually last longer. It will stay water repellent. And I think it will serve you well as you continue to use your product from The Wandering Parson. Again, this is Holloman from The Wandering Parson. I thank you for your time spent here with me. Um, Please check out my Etsy store at etsy.com slash thewanderingparson, or you can even email me at thewanderingparson at gmail.com. Thanks again, guys. I uh, hope to get another video out here fairly soon. We'll talk to you soon. Blessings.